With season one of Black Ops 2 arriving later on today, there comes an absolutely massive patch to the game with multiple changes in regards to things added, weapons buffed, nerfed, this, that and the other. Today we get into the entire patch notes, so sit back, relax and let's go through this together. How's it going guys? My name is DPJ and if you do enjoy the video, leaving a like really helps me out and if you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. So the patch notes I'll link down below. There's quite a lot here. I'm not going to lie to you. But for the most part, we will go through the important stuff I feel you need to know about. Also, if there's specifics you're looking for, I'll put timestamps in the video description. Go into each section of the important parts of this patch update. So let's go. New multiplayer maps will arrive with the Season 1 launch. We have Hideout, Heirloom as well as Extraction. All three maps, you can see details on, on screen now. Uh, Hideout, Extraction and Heirloom are all 6v6 maps, but Heirloom itself is also a 2v2 map. A new multiplayer modes here. We have a ransack. A ransack sees you looting gold bars from crates dotted around the area of operations on 6v6 maps. Once gathered, secure your loot by bringing it back to your team's stash. We also have prop hunt. This is a game mode many, many people were really excited to see return. Uh, prepare for an infamous game of hide and seek as the fan favorite Black Ops party mode is back. Drop into a multiplayer map as a prop or hunter. Badass. I cannot wait for this guys. Okay, so we're going to talk about now new weapons and these are both for multiplayer as well as zombies. We have the Krieg C. This is an assault rifle available from the Battle Pass. Uh, we have the SOG SMG again. This is from the Battle Pass. We have the Siren 9mm. This is a special weapon, a special event reward. Uh, we also have the Power Drill. This is a melee weapon. And again, it is an event reward. We also have new attachments, guys, for multiplayer and zombies. We have the 12 Gorge Dragon's Breath, a battle pass attachment, this is. Uh, we also have the Buffer Weight Stuck. This is an event reward. We also, guys, have the XM4 Burst Fire Conversion. This should be quite good, an event reward too. We have the Compact 92 Burst Fire Conversion. Again, an event reward. Pretty cool, guys. With details of each obviously seen on screen. Okay, so new multiplayer perks here. So we have the Shadow, which is a part of the strategic set. Uh, undetectable to enemy traps and mines. Pretty cool. Okay, so we have new score streaks. These are multiplayer and zombies. The Hang Cannon. This I was curious about. Available as an event reward in the season launch window. This mid-level score streak allows players to equip a massively powerful handgun for a finite amount of time. The hand cannon can also be accessed in zombies at the crafting table under support. Cool. Okay, so now guys, we move on to new operators, uh, multiplayer and zombies here. We have Goliath here, guys. Again, details you can see on the screen now. We have Zavati Sev Dumas, I believe that's pronounced. I'm probably wrong, I normally am. This is a main player in the role team. After the conclusion of the campaign, so players may recognize this player. We have the Replacer. This is a part of a bundle in Season 1. We have the Competitor CDL Home and Away Operators. Pretty cool, guys. There's also CDL Team Packs for a multitude of card teams, which you'll see on screen now with details exactly how these are obtained. Pretty cool. We then, guys, talk about a new event called the Hit List. So it states, who's next? Keep up your luxurious but slightly corrupt lifestyle during the hit list event. You're offered to take a no prisoners mission, kill or be killed. The hit list limited event gives players a board of contracts with one goal, take them out. Cross off the entire list and earn some exclusive loot for hire. Sounds very, very cool indeed. Okay, so zombies, new zombies director mode or directed mode. Liberty Fools and Terminus. For those players looking to witness a zombie story with a guided experience to complete the objectives of the main quests in Liberty Fools and Terminus, directed mode is available at launch. Directed mode offers direct assistance in completing the main quests with objectives listed on screen. Pretty cool. All side quests, SAM trials and the Rampage Inducer are disabled in this mode. Rounds are capped based on certain steps in the main quest progression with a maximum of round 15. 
the chance to earn unique calling card rewards for completing the main quests for Liberty Falls and Terminus before directed more goals lives will expire when season one launches. Okay, so on screen now you're seeing a little bit of global and the ricochet anti-cheat as well as the armory. Uh, if you want to pause the video and through these, be my guest guys. The armory it says uh, the armory will go live in Black Ops 6 in Season 1 Reloaded when the post-event content is available to unlock. In Warzone, the armory will be available to unlock at a player level 24 of Season 1's launch. So yeah, pretty cool guys. Okay, so a few changes to the performance and bug fixtures in regards to campaign you're seeing on the screen now. Okay, so multiplayer, and we're talking about maps right now. So starting with low town, addressed an issue where the water would flicker for some players. Protocol, addressed an issue where the water would flicker for some players. Adjusted the A search and destroy bomb site to prevent line of sight from artillery above. A red card, addressed an issue where players could get outside of the intended play space. Vault, adjusted the A, S and D bomb site to reduce the line of sight from the start spawn area. Spawn. Spawn logic updates across several maps to reduce the chance of spawning near enemies. Man oh man, I don't know how this is going to work on Steakhouse. Adjusted start spawns to subsonics to prevent damage in opposing an enemy team at match start. Cool. Modes. Addressed an issue across several maps where hardpoint zones could be captured outside of the intended boundaries. Addressed an issue where incorrect icons could display on the next hardpoint lock icon. Addressed an issue where the bomb in search and destroy could not be retrieved if dropped on a disabled vehicle. Addressed an issue where the time is almost up line would play too frequently in gunfight. Okay, so playlist added Newtown extraction and hideout to the core map pool. Added heirloom to the face off map pool. Great. Game chat addressed an issue where some players were unable to hear each other during intermission between rounds and in post game voice chat. Okay, so now guys, we're going to talk about weapons and there's a lot of changes here people and I feel many many players thought they were coming. Now there's changes to the AEK, which I feel needed it. Me as I love using snipers, I'm glad to see some sniper boss being thrown in here too across the board, but we'll get into it all guys. Okay, so a brief description of what's happening here you can see on screen now. Okay, so all weapons. Adjusted weapon motion while moving and changing stances to improve aiming feel and centering, especially with optics. Hold breath focus state will now be maintained while firing if applicable. Improved weapon depth of field settings when performing a weapon inspect. Okay, cool. Okay, so assault rifles. We are increasing the damage values of some of the assault rifles to ensure that they kill in just one bullet in hardcore modes. The headshot multiplier changes have either kept the bullets to kill with headshots the same or even improve them at some of the minimal damage ranges. Okay, so the assault rifle adjustments here and the XM2 we will start with. And don't forget guys, this is a weapon now that has been changed. So it can now have a burst fire mode to it, which I'm, I'm actually excited to see. So you can see the change of this on screen. Now we can see that there's actually a slight damage buff to this uh, in regards to damage range too. So yeah, cool. And you can also see the additional adjustments. So what about the AMES 85? So this as well has seen a slight damage buff. Pretty cool. And again, additional adjustments you can see on the screen now. So the GPR 91. In addition to the hardcore adjustments it states, we are further improving some handling times on a GPR 91 to solidify its role within the class. This one actually got quite a few changes in regards to the additional adjustments too. But again, you can see these on screen now. At the moment guys, I'm going for that that dark matter camo. I started with snipers, I've moved on to marksmen's and I'm going to make my way across the board to assault rifles. So in regards to using these and telling you how they feel right now, I can't really do that because again, assault rifles and SMGs are normally the things I use at last because they're normally the best weapons to use in games like this. But yes, I'm sure you guys will know and feel the changes way more in regards to being an assault rifle user here. Okay, so we also see the Goblin Mark II here. Like the GPR91, we are making some small initial adjustments to the Goblin Mark II to help it shine as the fastest semi-auto primary. Now, what I will say is I've been on the receiving end of the Goblin Mark II probably more than any other assault rifle in the game, and it seems pretty powerful in my opinion. Cool. 
Okay, so now we move on to SMGs and the Compact 92, a weapon we spoke about earlier on in the patch notes. The Compact 92 can now kill with one headshot in the hardcore modes at its max damage range. Bullets to kill at the min damage range have not changed, but headshots will now be much more effective at range. I mean, I'm not sure if it's a hardcore thing or not, but I don't feel SMGs, in my opinion, need any more range whatsoever. I mean, right now, in my opinion, SMGs have got crazy range and are outgunning a lot of ARs and even some marksmen. I mean, once you get clipped with one of these, the bounce, the flinch on your weapon just goes out of control and you don't really have time to retaliate. This shouldn't be an issue at certain ranges, but it is in my opinion. But you can see the changes on screen now to the Compact 92 with additional changes at the bottom. Okay, so shotguns here. The stray light laser attachment adjustments increase the time it takes to reach ADS spread from a 20% of an aim down sight speed to a 70% of the aim down sight speed. Slug attachment adjustments. Slugs allow players to run shotguns as mid-range precision weapons. As a trade-off, they have a limited short range effectiveness if you are not carefully hitting headshots. Cool. Okay, so we can see changes on screen now to the Marine S. Now this is a shotgun I've already leveled up, I actually quite liked it, I'm not going to lie to you, but you can see the changes they've applied to this weapon on the screen now with quite a few, I'm not going to lie, with the additional adjustments at the bottom, with the additional 12 gorge slug adjustments, pretty cool. And the ASG-89, I mean I actually found this way more inconsistent than the uh, Marine SP, uh, but it's still quite a fun weapon to use on those close quarters maps can be a little bit overpowered on that steakhouse i'm not gonna lie to you but i do feel the changes here are warranted in my opinion i mean yes it's a spraying shotgun at close range it should absolutely murder and it seems as though it just got a little bit better Okay, so now onto marksman rifles. Now we are adjusting handling stats on the burst fires so that they uh, fit more squarely into the intended roles. The SWAT 5.56 has a slower fire rate within each burst and more recoil, making it better suited for mid-range engagements. Meanwhile, the AEK973 has a better stability and precision, but a longer burst delay makes it a riskier pick when playing aggressively. We are also significantly reducing the power of the AEK973 rapid fire, which was too strong not to take. I mean, it really was, guys. I mean, I saw many, many builds on this weapon. I decided to go out there, level this thing up, get that rapid fire on it, and it was absolutely broken. It really was. So I'm, at, I'm not surprised that it's received a nerf because, in my opinion, it's definitely warranted. So you can see the changes, the adjustments to these marksman rifles on screen now. Uh, the SWAT 5.56 general adjustments. Aim down sight speed improved from a a 340 millisecond to a 315 millisecond sprint to fire time improved from a 215 millisecond to a 205 millisecond tactical sprint to fire time improved from a 325 millisecond to a 315 millisecond attachment adjustments rapid fire attachment recoil gun kick penalty increased from a 25 to a 30 percent vertical recoil penalty increased from a 25 percent to a 30 percent and horizontal recoil penalty increased from 25 percent to a 30 percent Jeez. Okay, I didn't expect those changes, I'm not going to lie. Okay, so the AEK973 general adjustments. Sprint to fire time increased from a 205 millisecond to a 215 millisecond. Tactical sprint to fire time increased from a 315 to a 325 millisecond. Uh, attachment adjustments, a rapid fire attachment. Rate of fire benefit reduced from a 10 to a 5%. Uh, burst fire delay increased from a 115 millisecond to a 295 millisecond. Over double that, people. Recoil gun kick increased from a 25% to a 50, doubled up. The vertical recoil penalty increased from a 20 to a 50% over doubled up horizontal recoil penalty increased from 25 percent to a 50 percent doubled up guys i mean i'm not sure if it's been harshly treated there i hope the player tested it i really do i mean them play testing it the devs play testing it and then giving it to the absolute insane players in well what's call of duty's online community is just going to be a completely different story but hey we will see guys i got a feeling though it may be slightly ruined, but we will see, we will see. Okay, so sniper rifles, my absolute babies here. We have been monitoring feedback on sniper rifles and are making some changes to promote more build diversity 
and improve the sniping experience before gaining access to a complete attachment set. We are lowering the baseline flinch on all snipers and reducing the flinch resistance given by stuck attachments. The resulting achieved flinch uh, values are much lower up front and are just a bit lower overall after equipping the stocks. We are also increasing aim walking movement speed bonuses on stock attachments to make those choices more valuable. Lastly, we are improving the ADS idle sway delay by default on all snipers, meaning that on average, there will be less deviation from your point of aim when entering ADS. Pretty cool. This is something a lot of people used a certain laser to actually, um, well, balance out. Our goal is to support the various sniping player styles you all enjoy through several viable weapon builds. We will continue to monitor weapon and attachment data, as well as your feedback to ensure that all sniping player styles are fun and rewarding in Black Ops 6. Now me playing sniper on every single Call of Duty I can remember, in my opinion, in Black Ops 6 snipers feel definitely underpowered. They feel sluggish to use, you feel slow, I feel ADS, definitely do with an improvement too uh, so yeah we will see about individual changes right now so sniper rifle class adjustments all snipers now have a one second of 50 percent idle sway scaling at the beginning of aiming down sight that should help all snipers have had baseline flinch improved by 17 percent that should also help too okay so sniper rifle adjustments the lw3a1 thrust line we see the frost line falling behind uh, the LR uh, 7.62 and are buffing its handling and idle sway to make it a more appealing choice in spite of its more limited one shot hit locations. Okay, so general adjustments here. Aim down sight speed improved from a 550 milliseconds to a 535 millisecond. Not a massive increase, but it's definitely a benefit. A sprint to fire time improved from a 300 to 290 milliseconds. Tactical sprint to fire time improved from a 450 millisecond to a 430 millisecond. ADS idle sway reduced or improved by 10%. Attachment adjustments, infiltrator stuck attachment. Aim walking speed improvement increased from a 0.16 millisecond to a 0.58 millisecond. Heavy stuck attachment, flinch resistance decreased from a 60 to a 53%. Not sure that was needed to be honest. The CHF barrel attachment, recoil gun kick penalty improved from a 75 to a 50%, pretty cool. And the vertical recoil penalty on the attachment improved from a 65 to a 50%. Combat stuck attachment, aim walking movement speed improvement increased from a 0.25 millisecond to a 0.33 millisecond. And flinch resistance decreased from a 35 to a 23. So great changes there, in my opinion, to the thrust line. So, what about the SVD? General adjustments introduced a delay after firing before a new shot can be queued. This does not change the rate of fire, but prevents accidentally firing extra unintended shots when repeatedly pulling the trigger. Okay, sprint to fire time improved from a 310 ms or millisecond to a 300 millisecond. Tactical sprint to fire time improved from a 460 to a 450 millisecond. And we can also see attachment adjustments right here guys on the screen now. If you do want to pause the video and read through these, you can. Lastly, in regards to snipers, the LR 7.62. General adjustments. Tactical sprint to fire time improved from a 470 to a 460 millisecond. Uh, and again guys, the attachments and the changes here, the adjustments to them, you can see on screen now. Some great changes across the board in regards to sniper rifles in my opinion. Definitely needed, I'm not sure it's going to make a massive improvement. But overall, for someone who loves using snipers, it's definitely going in the right direction in my opinion. Okay, so moving on to various other changes here, which again, we won't go through absolutely every one, but if you do want to pause the video, be my guest. We'll start with Gunsmith, then Perks, Score Streaks, Ranks and Prestige, Challenges, Movement Updates, Theatre, and then UI, Graphics and Stability. Now, yeah, again, if you want to pause the video and read through all these, you can be my guest. Nothing crazy here. I do notice the change to Archangel. I had this issue so many times guys when firing into the air and it just explodes in my face they've addressed an issue where the rocket would sometimes explode immediately when firing near a wall i had this problem so many times people again perks here as well slight reduction to the ninja footstep volume but nothing massively changed here in my opinion okay so now we're going to move on to zombies and we're going to start with the maps 
Terminus addressed an issue where diffuse progress was sometimes not saved if the player stopped diffusing during the Apocalypse Protocol main quest step. Addressed an issue where entering uh, the Casimir after a completing the main quest would teleport the player to the boss arena and down them. Addressed an issue where loading into a save game after unlocking the pack a punch machine could cause some doors to have inconsistent collision. Addressed an issue during the main quest where connecting both node connectors at the same time would cause overlapping voice lines. Change the location of the ammo cache on the seaside path. And then Liberty Fools here updated the first Mangler whose arm is blown off to always drop a Mangler cannon instead of only the first Mangler that spawns. Resolved an issue where their Blanchard would not be present during some dialogue. Okay, so now guys, we move on to weapon adjustments. The recent changes to assault rifles and zombies were an unintended carryover from a global weapon tuning pass. We do not intend to inherit all MP or multiplayer weapon tuning without looking at how it affects zombies tuning as well. We have corrected this in this update. We are also making a pass on increasing the damage performance of ARs in zombies. All ARs had their pack a punch base damage and overall critical damage increased. That's great change. While you may see the word decreased in a few places, the performance of these weapons is still increased overall. Additionally, the HE-1 launcher has gotten a buff to become more useful at stopping hordes of zombies. When pack a punch, it will now have more stock ammo and a larger explosion and more overall damage. Pretty cool. Now, I ain't the biggest zombie player in the world, but I know a good change when I see one and there's quite a few good changes to the weapons you're seeing on screen now. now if you do want to pause the video and read through these be my guest uh, but we have the AMES 85, the AK-47, the AS Val, the Model L, the XM4, the GPR-91 and that is it for the assault rifles. Now moving on to the HE-1 which is a launcher you can see the adjustments on screen now applied to this weapon. Now, in regards to bug fixes, let's go through these. Addressed an issue where camos were not being applied to zombie builds. Closed an exploit that allowed players to have three weapons. Jeez, I didn't know about that. Addressed an issue where uh, wall buy rarity would reset when loading into a save. Addressed an issue where yellow damage numbers would appear when hitting a critical spot with a ray gun. Okay, perks, quick revive. Dying Wish Augment. Addressed an issue where Dying Wish could activate when diving from large heights while protected from full damage. Elemental Pop. Addressed an issue where Elemental Pop would prevent normal ammo mod activations. Juggernaug. Tail Shower Augment. Tail Shower now applied damage mitigation while being grabbed by an Almagam. Cool. PhD Flopper. Addressed an issue where diving onto an elevated or inclined surface such as stairs or up a hill, would not activate the perk. Gobblegums addressed an issue that prevented players uh, revived by near-death experience from keeping all their perks. Cool. Field upgrades adjusted the description for the enemy mine to no longer say it deals electrical damage to accurately reflect the damage type. Increase the dark flare damage from a 20 to 40% of the base zombie's max health per tick. Address an issue where an extra charge on field upgrades would be lost when loading a save. Support. Address an issue that could cause the mutant injection to end early when near water. Address an issue that allowed the player to pick up a sentry turret while using mutant injection. Reduce self damage from the LDBR. Save and load. Close an exploit that allowed keeping a save file after it had already been loaded. Cool. Enemies addressed an issue where zombies charmed by brain rot could prevent the player from completing an exfil. Addressed an issue where loading a save would disable the rampage inducer if it was active. Addressed an issue where zombies would throw guts at the end camera if the player leaves the match to end the game. Terminus addressed an issue where rarely the round would not end after killing all zombies. Addressed an issue where the amalgam could pull players into walls causing them to get stuck. Addressed an issue where diving while being hit by a knockback from the patient 13 could push the player further than intended. Liberty Fools addressed an issue that prevented the abomination from spawning inside Fuller's Liberty Lanes. Addressed an issue where the abomination could fire off a beam attack before leaving a spawn closet. 
Okay, so activities addressed an issue that could prevent one elite from spawning consistently during X-Field from round 16 onwards. Update the SAM trials that required the player to not take damage to display a progress bar instead of a timer. Terminus addressed an issue where the players would be able to use equipment, score streaks, and fire weapons during the bot race awards sequence. XP earn race addressed an issue where XP was being rewarded to all weapons being used in an assist instead of just the last one. If two weapons were used in an assist, only the last one used by the players getting the assist will be awarded XP. Okay, so on screen now guys you can see challenges and then AFK detection and then UI graphics and stability. If you want to pause the actual video and read through these, be my guest. But there we have it guys, so the latest patch update of the season one patch for Black Ops 6. Absolutely humongous, like I said, 26 minutes into the video and I've basically not read the entire thing in regards to descriptions and changes etc etc but yes season one enjoy i hope you enjoyed the video if you did leave a like it really helps me out if you like what you see and want to see more call of duty be sure to subscribe and hopefully guys i will see you on that next one